wanted to begin with a bit of stage setting in terms of why Excel has become so important, really over the last 10 years, but specifically in the last five years. Some of you will, of course, know a lot of this already, but it used to be the case that in analytical roles, uh, kind of disciplines where you're directly modeling assets that you're investing and selling, or valuation roles where you're benchmarking AUM performance, it was kind of a given that Excel would be important. The main change I've seen in the last five years is Excel spreading in importance across disciplines that had no real element of modeling to them in the past, like asset management and investment agency and corporate real estate and elements of development management roles. All of these roles now, or nearly all of them, it's a massive advantage if the candidate can produce an Excel cash flow, at least to an intermediate standard, and it's becoming more and more present on job description. So why do I, as a recruiter, think this is? Well, I think one obvious thing to mention is the GFC. I think that was a massive culture shock in our industry, and it transitioned us from being an environment where you would use your intuition about the deals you do or the CapEx projects you do, and you'd use your network and your friends, and you'd know you'd have a good buyer or a good seller or a good lead. And it's made real estate a much more quantitative discipline where investors expect the returns you're talking about to be anchored in cold, hard financial fact. So whether you're an investment manager, an asset manager, an asset manager, a corporate real estate surveyor, advising occupiers on performance or businesses that you work for, you need to be able to root the, the uh, instructions you're giving in cold financial fact. And the best way of doing that to reassure investors or to get lending from banks, however you're doing it, is to have a very clear Excel model, which outlines the profits you can expect, the time horizon, the various assumptions, how debt figures in. And so I do think the GFC, which does predate me a little bit with my time at Cobalt, I began in 2014. So I felt that I was joining Cobalt in the recovery from the GFC, and I was really seeing the beginnings of um, modeling become more and more of a part of the jobs I work on. But I think there's a second reason too, and I think that is much more nuanced. And I think it's about how much repositioning and redevelopment is important in modern real estate. We've obviously seen a bit of underperformance in the classic traditional sectors um, like office and retail. And we've seen significantly stronger performance in areas like urban mixed use and living. What that's done for the recruitment market is a lot of us get roles on where the explicit demand in the role is to find a candidate who is capable in transforming a traditional commercial asset into a living asset, or perhaps uh, a bit more nuanced than that. It could be retaining some of the office or retail, but complementing it with some BTR or PBSA. Now, this new drive towards repositioning in real estate has also heightened the need to have very quantitatively strong candidates because repositioning is an inherently risky thing to do. It's a long time until you get a favorable return because you're in investing a lot of capex to change the asset. So you need to be able to persuade your investors that the numerical backing for this project is worth it and that you have a very clear time horizon where whereby the asset will be transformed into X, will have tenants in it, and you can actually expect a return. Now, how does that investor pressure translate to the business hiring? Well, then that business is going to be needing candidates working for them who are actually capable of benchmarking their development, asset management, leasing work with knowing how the day-to-day -day work they're doing is impacting the financial model. So it isn't always about being able to create the most you know, brilliant multi-tab Excel formulas. I would word it more in terms of it's very good to have general Excel literacy, to be able to walk yourself through a model, to understand the terminology around levered and unlevered IRRs and DCFs. That's that's the spirit of a lot of the roles I work on. It's not like you're going to be handcuffed to the desk, modeling, modeling, modeling. It's more that it's just very good to be literate of models, to be able to do some basic modeling to help appraise your work as you go. So to summarize, I think the main two changes I've seen since 2014 is the GFC when I joined and we were recovering and trying to improve the way we did the market, investments, being more rigorous, being more compliant in how we do deals. 
And the second and more recent kind of post-COVID change would be the drive towards repositioning and taking advantage of the huge boom in the living sector. Both of those have made modeling really important. Um, and it's also meant that us as recruiters, more and more often we're vetting candidates against analysis capabilities. Um, I do want to say that there have always been companies that have been financially adjacent. I'm thinking of the kind of North American real estate private equity firms or the pension funds where uh, numbers have probably always been important and the ability for a surveyor to do analysis has been key. Uh, what I'm more talking about here is that this has spread from, from that to the entire market. And, and I think the cultural ramifications is that real estate's moved from something where it's all about who you know, um, getting you know a mate at the pub to kind of join you in this joint venture deal and that kind of thing. It's completely shifted that. I think it's made it a much more level playing field. I think the companies that are quantitatively strongest and have the people in-house that can do the best modeling and, and have the best analytical capabilities are frankly able to get ahead of the curve and be more persuasive to investors. So I think another massive cultural impact is it's taken away, you know, it's who you know, a very traditional approach to property, and it's much more about cold, hard financial facts. Um, so I'm now ready.